This is Adam Taxon, main administrator for the Daily Beck on Facebook here. Uh, we will know in a few, it's June 5th, 2012, about 5.48 p.m. Eastern time right now. I'm only now catching up with uh, Glenn Beck's show from this morning, which is now, by the way, on the air here in Philadelphia. Uh, but that's another story. I listened to the podcast. So anyhow, but the important thing tonight is we're going to know the results of the results of the Wisconsin recall election. And uh, Glenn Beck, as you will hear here, um, gives starts off the show today by addressing George Soros and his you know not that well known role in this election directly. Um, I you know this is the first two minutes or so of the show. Then uh, I took out some of the filler. Uh, then I go from about five and a half minutes to uh, 13 and a half minutes into the show. So here it is. It probably will become, well, actually it won't be obsolete afterwards. So it's worth forwarding even after Scott Walker hopefully wins tonight. Okay, here it is. First thing off the table today, Wisconsin is a very big deal. Today is a very, very big day for the Republic. Where do we stand in the end? Are we... Are we a uh, country that is lost in lies? Are we a country that is um, able to be purchased by uh, labor unions? Are we a country that is intimidated? I want you to know, it's, it's, uh, rest assured, Eric Holder is on the ground in Wisconsin today. And the Department of Justice is there to make sure that nothing funny goes on. And that is, you, you, voters, you are as safe there as you would be if you, you know, had like, I don't know, um, say, the Black Panthers on the ground. So you got that going for you. Today, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to MRC. That's the Media Research Center. Dan Gaynor and Iris Somberg for their excellent, excellent expose on George Soros. George Soros plays a role in Wisconsin. I've often lamented the fact that when I went to Fox, I always thought that when we stumbled onto important news, others would be there to pick up the ball and run with it, but it never happened. But these two reporters at MRC have just written a tremendous piece taking on George Soros something that almost no one does. In the mainstream media, we hear all about the evil, dastardly Koch brothers, (laughs) snidely whiplash, and their filthy money and influence in politics. But what you don't hear is about George Soros and his filthy money and his filthy influence, snidely whiplash. At the same time, the media has absolutely no problem with Soros-funded groups like Center for American Progress, the Tides Foundation, Media Matters, Sojourners, NARAL, Catholics for Choice, Planned Parenthood, Think Progress, the Southern Poverty Law Center, and dozens and dozens and dozens of others. But the reason why we're talking about George Soros today on Election Day is because nothing can really compare to the mainstream media's ignorance of the Soros election manipulating program called SOS, the SOS Project. What is it? SOS stands for the Secretary of State Project. It was established in July 2006 as an independent 527 organization devoted to helping Democrats get elected to the office of Secretary of State in selected swing or battleground states. Why? Because these are the states where the margin of victory in the 2000 pres- 2004 presidential election between George W. Bush and John Kerry had been at 120,000 votes or less. Hear me carefully, 120,000 votes or less. Swing states. So what did he decide to do? He decided to make sure we capture, as Snidely Whiplash and his League of Thieves, capture the person who does all the counting. Capture the person who does the fairness check. 
One of the main duties of Secretary of State is to serve as the chief election officer that certifies candidates as well as the election results in his or her state. The holder of this office then can potentially play a key role in determining the winner of a close election. So let's see if we have this right. Hungarian-born George Soros sets out to control the outcome of American elections by helping like-minded Democrats gain all important secretaries of state seats in key swing states all over the country. Now tell me that this isn't a story, that the paper of record, with all the news that's fit to print, the New York Times, Tell me this isn't a story that they should be interested in. Tell me that Morley Safer at 60 Minutes wouldn't be beating down the door of David Koch's mansion. We are here on the doorstep of David Koch's mansion just trying to get some answers, demanding answers why why he was trying to manipulate U.S. elections and the U.S. election process. Oh, look at what the evil Coke and his brother is doing. Uh, except it's not the Coke brothers doing it. And 60 Minutes doesn't seem to know even the word doorbell when it comes to the doorstep of George Soros. George Soros is an admitted manipulator of national currencies to the point where he has brought down five governments of sovereign nations. In fact, George Soros thinks that's fun. The first part was this uh, subversive activity, disrupting a repre- repressive regimes. Uh, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a, lot of, is a subversive activity. Subversive activity? He's manipulating the minds of you through his massive contributions to universities all over the world. And George Soros has and is seeking to manipulate our elections here in America. Fortunately, we and the Blaze are no longer alone in the effort to shine disinfectant and sunlight on Mr. One World Government, Mr. New World Order, Mr. Open Society now. Yeah. Fortunately, we're no longer alone on the exposure of the man who is trying to fundamentally transform the United States of America. We now have help from our friends at MRC. So again, thank you. And George, even as you have your fun trying to push the European Union over the edge. What? I I gave a speech. Now it's strangely missing off my website. What? I don't know what you're saying. I'm just trying to drain the blood out of the necks of everybody Who likes the best? But as you are trying to push the West into the financial abyss, creating a domino effect around the world, leaving you in a position to clean up on the new world order. This would be the time because you really need to bring China Mm. into the creation of a new uh, 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 world order. order. Even as you work on all of that, know this. We're on to you. As you know, we won't sit down. We will not be silent. We will not comply. We will not stand idly by. We are committed. And today we begin to activate. The tide is turning, Mr. George Soros. And you're about to get a nice glimpse of that. Later tonight, when Scott Walker beats back your labor union friends, along with their massive money and intimidation techniques, and wins in key battleground states, this time Wisconsin. And I believe he will win handily enough that your Secretary of State there, progressive Democrat, Doug LaFolliette, oh, I've heard that name before, how? He won't have any say in the outcome. How do I know that name? Oh, because Doug's great-grandfather... And the founder of the progressive movement in Wisconsin, Fighting Bob, that guy 
and uh, and Doug's uh, great grandfather were, were brothers. Oh, the progressive web is a tangled one in Wisconsin. It's really too bad that today is the day, as my mother and my grandmother used to do, when they see a web in the corner, they would just get the broom and broom it out. Webs have a way of going into the dustbin of history. Because whether it's the broom or the rising tides of the sea, the tide is turning. And we are about to be the ones that have a little bit of fun. This time it's for us to have a little bit of fun, Mr. George Soros. <laughs> 